Hi friends! Today is going to be the TBR takedown for the month of October. Today is bulk filming day, clearly. Uh, cause you've seen this messy hair and you've seen this messy room and you've seen my face already in this outfit. So we're just going to keep going with it and we're going to pretend like you didn't. Okay. So this month for our TBR takedown, there's a lot. We're going to go up. We're going to go down. There's a lot of books we're going to talk about. It was my trying to read 31 books in October. I died in October for about two weeks. So there was not 31 books read for sure, for sure. Um, but I did actually end in the same number that I ended at last year. Though so this year I did count DNFs. So I read technically four, three. I read three less whole books than I did last year. But considering I didn't read for two weeks, I feel like that was fantastic. So we're going to go through, um, this is not going to be a wrap up because I read a lot of books. So we're going to do a separate wrap up. This is just going to be our TPR takedown. If you see me looking over here, it's because my numbers and things are over here. And if you see me looking over here, it's because my books are over here. All right, let's get started. So the first thing I did, and we are doing this in chronological order. So there's some weird things going on in here. I DNF'd the very first book that I picked up for the month. And that was Double Double Twins in Trouble. That was an ARC. It will be in my recent ARC DNFs. So you can find it there. Um, but essentially, I started reading it, wasn't having a good time, wasn't going to start off the month with a bad book, so I DNF. I then read Paybacks a Witch by Lana Harper, which I do not own, so it did not come off of my count. I then read Witch of Volume 11, which does come off the shelves, and then read Vampire Problems by India Watson, which does not come off my shelves despite the fact that it is a physical copy, um, because I was counting this as an ARC. Um, because it was gifted to me by the author to read. I've had it for a while and also it got lost in the mail for a full calendar year. So I then read A Witch Volume 12, which comes off of my shelves. We then were on vacation and obviously because I was out shopping with the girls, I had to buy some books. Uh, the first book that I picked up is all Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline O'Donoghue. Uh, this cover, my friends, is why I picked this up. It literally was just there on the bookshelf facing out like this and I had to have it. Um, so this says Maeve Chambers will do almost anything for attention. So when she finds a dusty pack of tarot cards at school, she soaks up the celebrity that comes with giving eerily accurate readings to her classmates. There's one person whose attention she can't quite capture, though. Her former best friend, Lily O'Callaghan, whom she betrayed last year in an act that still makes Maeve cringe. When Lily is finally goaded into sitting for a reading, she selects a card that shouldn't be there at all. Two days later, she disappears. Consumed by guilt, Maeve teams up with beautiful, sophisticated classmate Fiona and sexy, mysterious Ro, Lily's older sibling, to try to find her lost friend. But as the three combine their unnatural talents to bring Lily back, they must face the dark forces keeping her trapped before she's lost forever. This sounded fantastic. Like, this cover, this book, how have I never heard of this? This came out last year, I think. I think it was last year. Let me double check. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. Yeah, this came out in 2021 and then sold enough to sell into paperback in 2022. And I've never heard of it. And I don't know how because this is me. Like, this is my perfect book. I mean, it might not be. I might hate it. I might DNF it. Who knows? But like, from the cover and the synopsis, this is my perfect book. So how did I not know it existed? I don't know, but now I do. So now I'm gonna read it. Okay. I also on that trip, because I was in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, picked up Ghosts of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Uh, this is by Jennifer Billick. Um, it just is like ghost stories of different parts of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And it was Halloween time and I was in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So it seemed like the right thing to do. I then DNF'd a audiobook that I was reading. Um, Elizabeth Webster and the Court of Common Pleas. Um, that was recommended to me by Danny from Somber Honey, who I'll link down below um, because she did some of these, I think, were suggested to me by her. I know that one for sure. Okay. Um, I didn't enjoy it, but to be fair, I don't like court books. And I thought maybe because this was a Y or a mid grade that I might like it. I didn't. 
I don't like courtroom drama books. Who knew? I like it on TV. Do I like it on TV? Not really. No, I like procedural law dramas. I don't like courtroom stuff. Now we know that. Okay, anyway, moving on. I then read The Possession of Natalie Glasgow, which is a uh, short, what's the short books called? A novella. Um, I read that, which I don't own, so it didn't count. I then DNF'd this chunker. It's not a big book, but I DNF'd A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. I DNF'd this at 80%. Um, if you want to know why, you can check out the wrap up, but I DNF'd this at 80%. I owned it, so it's coming off of the bookshelves. Okay, we're gonna get to a lot of books that I don't own physical copies of, so let's get to it. I read Thirteens and Bracken Beast by Kate Alice Marshall. Um, Kate Alice Marshall, whom I love, and Midgrade, which I love. Spooky Midgrade, which I love. I then read The Stitchers and The Collectors, and those are by... Lorian Lawrence. Those are recommended to me by Laura Nettles, who I'll also link down below. I then hauled The Glass Witch by Lindsay Puckett, and then also subsequently read The Glass Witch by Lindsay Puckett. Uh, because I hauled it, I get to tell you about it. This book is about Addie, who is a young girl. Uh, she is a witch, and her and her mother live away from her family home. Her family is cursed, so that if more than three members of her family are in the town at the same time, something bad will happen. Essentially, something happens where Addie, her mom, her aunt, and her grandma are all within town lines at the same time. And Addie is cursed, uh, where a witch hunter is coming after her, it turns her bones into glass. Um, and she has to join a beauty pageant to beat the villain. While this book has Addie, who is a plus size character who we don't see enough of in mid-grade representation, but also has um, her best friend slash neighbor character, Fatima, who the weirdest thing about Fatima is that she's monster obsessed, but she loves things that are girly and glittery. And the way that she adds those things together is so wonderful. And also Rosie, who is like this weird misfit rabbit. Um, Addie's grandma has like a rabbit sanctuary for like all of the rabbits that nobody else wants. Um, and nobody wants Rosie because she has red eyes and she's a white rabbit and people like associate that with demon-y things. Um, but this book is really about family, learning where your place is and how to belong in with your family and how to feel like you're good enough and about, you know, self-esteem and all of those things. I think this is a fantastic read for mid-grade kids um, around the spooky season, but also for anyone to enjoy, obviously, because I enjoyed it and, you know, here we are. I then read Her Buried Lives by Caitlin Duncan, which was an arc that I had. Also, Caitlin is, uh, as well as Lindsay, are both um, author tubers here on YouTube. So I'll link them down below. Speaking of author tubers on YouTube and books that I've hauled, uh, this month I hauled not only this gorgeous A Prophecy in Ash um, by my friend Julie Santopoulos, but this is the second book in the In Ash series. I also hauled the... <laughs> special edition of A Curse and Ash. You can tell their colors are different. Do, do, do. A Prophecy and Ash. I think I said A Curse and Ash, but it's a Prophecy and Ash. Their colors are different. And I also got a new copy of the exclusive edition of A Curse and Ash as well, because mine uh, had seen better days. So I gave this to my cousin, Ashley, the old cover, and then got myself a new one and then got two copies of A Prophecy and Ash. So now I have two copies of each book and I'm excited. If you don't know what A Curse and Ash is about, A Curse and Ash, or the In Ash series, if you will, uh, follows our main character, Ashlyn, who is part fae, part witch. And she has a fae fiance who she's like betrothed to more than like uh, she picked this guy out. And in the world that she lives in, witches have a magical partner who helps them create their magic. Ashlyn's never had one, but she finds one and it's a guy who doesn't want to be her magical partner, but he maybe wants to be her boyfriend. That's very spicy, got lots of romance, got lots of magic and world building and creative and it's all of the things. Um, it does involve a thruple, not a reverse harem because of the, the technical definition of a reverse harem is three or more male partners, which does not happen. Therefore, just a thruple and also that it makes me happy, okay? It's a fantastic book, and if you're not reading it, you should be reading it, and why are you not reading it already? Anyway, moving on. I then read Gallows Hill by Darcy Coates. 
I don't own it. It doesn't count. I then read Firstborn by Will Dean, which counts as coming off my shelves because here it is. And then I also read on the very last day I finished The Ghosts of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. So I also get to take that off. Ta-da, my friends. Okay, so we hauled a bunch of books. We read a bunch of books. We DNF'd some books. Essentially, if my math is correct, we should be at 85 books now. We went from 88 to 85. We didn't go very far, but we did go. And that's the important part. I had planned on doing some rereads this month. I planned on reading more of the books that are on my shelves this month. But honestly, again, I only read for like two weeks of the month. So the fact that I read this many books is fantastic. But I just wasn't feeling rereads. I wasn't feeling rom-coms. There was a lot of things I just wasn't really feeling this month. And so I just read what felt like the thing I wanted to read in the moment. And that was a lot of spooky mid-grade that I didn't already own. So I read a lot of spooky mid-grade and I had a fantastic time and that's all I could ask for. So these are the books I hauled. I hauled a lot, but I read a lot. So I'm feeling okay about it. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye! My heart is so hollow, but I